Hi, I'm Pamela Poole and I live an amazing life as an artist and an author. Today is amazing because I'm in the studio, but I'm also um, gearing up towards my series, Inspired Art Appreciation, to coincide with the release of my first devotional, Inspired Artistry, Embracing the Creative Calling. And I thought I would um, show you a little bit about art appreciation in a nutshell rather than all of the separate uh, uh, videos that you could actually see some of what I'm going to do in one place. And that is with my handy dandy art history scrapbook. And this is probably 15 years old, maybe longer than that. Um, this is something I made when I was teaching art for a high school credit to Christian homeschooled students. And I took different periods of history, tried to think of some way that they could have a hands-on way to uh, deal with this instead of just a bunch of facts floating around that they would probably never remember. And also to give them an idea of the motivations behind different artists in history and art movements, how their, their culture around them influence what they were doing. I'm going to try to keep this to about 10 to 12 minutes. It's going to be hard and it's going to feel like I'm just breezing past this. And there is a glare on these pages. They're covered with acetate. So um, I'll try to get something uh, better than that with more description, maybe some pictures when I post the lesson plans on my website. And you can always just contact me through my website, PamelaPool.com, if you want to ask me more questions, some clarification, and that sort of thing. I'll be glad to help. So when we open the scrapbook, the very first page starts, for me, at the beginning, which is with my Christian students that I had, Genesis 1-1, when God created the world. And we, one of his attributes is creativity. I believe that, like others, that he has stamped his imprint of many of his attributes onto each of us as his creation. And um, from that, that is why all of us have some kind of creativity. Whether we use it for him or not isn't the question. It's whether or not we actually had it because he created us in his image. So I begin at the beginning and I show how early people in the Bible from Adam's descendants were creative, um, making music and metallurgy and all sorts of things. Um, we get to the days of Noah when um, only the imaginations of people were only evil, the Lord says. And he created a worldwide flood to destroy everyone except the only righteous people who lived at the time. These people were living for like 900 years. So if you multiply that times all of Adam and Eve's children, you had a lot of people actually on the earth. It wasn't sparsely populated. And um, Noah was the only righteous man. He preached for a hundred years during that time and no one would listen. And they laughed at him about the flood coming. And so in the meantime, he was that crazy old man who would preach and build the ark, which was a remarkable feat of technology for its time. And it survived and we go on to um, other aspects of um, how things happened in the Bible. We have the Tower of Babel, which was quite a feat of technology as well. Um, men were very creative. And um, then the dispersion, which created all the nations of the world. We, our, our, There's no such thing as a race. They were called nations. We were all one blood from Adam and then through Noah to be populating the world. They dispersed from there. I have them going to the caves where they did their cave art, um, living temporarily until they migrated where they were going to go. And I have um, sections on how they were carrying corruptions of the original faith from the Garden of Eden into their own culture and um, making their own stories and mythologies out of that. One that you might notice is a Persian rug will typically have the biblical tree of life design on it in some fashion. I hope you can get this without much glare. Um, so these corruptions from biblical history were being carried throughout the world. I have a section on the seven wonders of the world 
Um, these were so remarkable that we can't create these this, these days. Um, modern people can't do that. So if you had the idea that we have evolved into something higher than original man, that is not the case. That's not what history and um, archaeology proves. We have devolved rather than evolving. Um, the pyramids, the Great Pyramid would have been the first of these wonders if you saw it here on the page. And we today, we don't know how they did that. We can't imagine how we couldn't construct it ourselves with the technology that we have. And then we go to the very center of this book, and it is between B.C. and A.D. B.C., before Jesus was born, and A.D. after he was born. And then we, so that, I have a two-page spread that celebrates Jesus. That's very fitting, I think. And then we start over to where some of you could, if you can't, use this in a Christian setting, or that's not your beliefs, um, you could start right after the birth of Jesus in the AD period and start with Byzantium. They had, there were, a lot came out of that, um, mosaics and everything, but I call it early Christian art, and that's how I started it off. And then the medieval era, a lot of people think that um, that was the Dark Ages, but if you actually study the history instead of just taking someone's word for it, you'll find that there was a lot of light, a lot of illumination, and all the pictures, stained glass, and everything that they were doing, that was to educate illiterate people. Pictures were their words. That's how they could learn about the world, or about stories, or about biblical truths. And then we have the um, illuminated manuscripts, quite a feat by the monks in the monasteries took a lot of detail and time. Tapestries were narrative art, and I have actually have in this one some needle and thread and that sort of thing that you can see. So there's a lot you can do with this. You can use all, bring all sorts of elements into it. Um, the Reformation obviously um, had impact on the world. We go to the at time of the explorers, and one thing I want to note about this page is that there were also, it wasn't just art that was a big deal then. People were creating navigational tools that were beautiful, very ornately made, and a man was really exploring the world around him. One of my favorite artists, and we will get into more about him as we go through this Inspired Art Appreciation Series, is Leonardo da Vinci. And he is the undisputed genius of all time, remarkable man that could do almost anything that he set his mind to doing. And I have two pages that I did on him because there was just so much information. Um, if we move on over, we're still in the high renaissance. And of course, how could I not do a spread on Michelangelo? And one of my favorite sculptures that he has done is this one here called the Pietà. It is Mary um, after Jesus has been taken from the cross and he depicts her as being laid in her lap. And I actually have a sculpture of that, a little um, reproduction that I love. And then we go to Raphael. And the reason I wanna mention him is hopefully to dispel any notions you have about how there are little baby angels in heaven because that's not biblical. Raphael invented those. That was an artist mine who gave you that idea. A lot of power and influence in an artist's hands, isn't it? Um, there are no such things as cherubim that are little baby angels. That If you look up cherubim in scripture, this couldn't be farther from the description that the Bible has of cherubim. And then I did a spread on the famous composers and um, their contributions to the world because music moves us, doesn't it? Moves our heart, moves our feet, gets us going, gets our blood going so we can stay on track. Um, I go into the Baroque period and neoclassicism, and I wanna point out this particular page because my last art appreciation um, video was about William Holman Hunt, and this page has some of his art to represent the Pre-Raphaelites. This is, if you remember, I showed you the picture of the light of the world, 
And then down here, I, I had showed you some picture of, pictures of stray sheep. And there's another picture of sheep. And if we kept on through here as fast as I can go, um, we go to the Impressionist uh, era, and I will try to do an art appreciation video on that for you, because it's one of my favorites as well. And we have people like Degas and um, Monet and Van Gogh, people who really shook the world, and I love Van Gogh's sunflowers. Sunflowers are my favorite flowers, so um, I did a big spread on that. We'll get into the details with this series. And I want to tell you about an, uh, two other artists that we'll be talking about in this series, and that will be Norman Rockwell and um, N.C. Wyeth. They're Americans that were also considered illustrators, so some people are like, oh, they're not artists. These are artists. <laughs> and they were masters at what they did, at manipulating your feelings to follow into what they were trying to get you to feel. And um, I loved Norman Rockwell's view of life because he said he knew it wasn't ideal, but it should be ideal. And so he was going to paint the world the way he wanted to see it, not the way it really was. Don't you love that sentiment? I like to do that too with my art. We can all get caught up in the everyday nasty here and now, but um, really we should think higher than the world does. And um, N.C. Wyeth is one of my favorites because of all the book illustrations he did. And we will see that in a later episode. But um, Treasure Island is one of my favorites that you might remember seeing his illustrations from. And finally, when I end this, I explain um, something, a little something about the arts in general. And I mention Robert Frost's comment to someone that he was mentoring, to a young man, and he said, young man, if you want to do something that takes courage, go into the fine arts. Amen. <laughs> that is so true today, just as true as it was then, and I'm sure Robert Frost had seen that from art history. So this is my art history scrapbook. I will be putting the lesson plans for this to just get you started. These are highly individual, so all I'll be doing is giving you a little spot on the map for you to take off with in your own form of creativity. You could use it with your kids at whatever comprehension level that they have. Mine was done with a high school level, so I could go a lot of places with that. But um, younger kids, they, they just can't really retain as much as perhaps the, the facts of history would say. So you just be creative with what you know they can understand. Thank you so much for joining me in my studio, and I hope you'll join me with this art series, Inspired Art Appreciation. And until next time, go out and be salt and light. Be a pleasure to behold in someone's day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.